A dream becomes a goal when action is taken towards its achievements. These are the words of Bo Bennett. And I couldn't think of any better way to begin the success story at the Sulajar Embankment Dam in Ninja State, Nigeria, which is ably managed by the aquaculture expert, Mr. Willie Florin. This video, which was shot on the 31st day of December 2022, reveals the journey so far on this project we started early in the year. If you have been following our channel for a while, you will recall that sometime in the earlier part of 2022, Mr. Wheelie shared his dream. What has become of this project site will amaze you, as it is indeed testimony to what can be achieved when determination is quelled with the needed action by a committed team. My name is Don Mekiyudu and it gives me great pleasure to be your anchor. Please do well to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're also looking forward to getting your feedback in the comment section below. You're welcome to our channel. I see a lot happening around here today and um, it looks like uh, we're harvesting obviously. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when we started our business in uh, January, I say mid January, mm. building our ponds, there was nothing like such over here. Yes. But we have built our ponds, we have already been stocking since July. And uh, yes, and we're harvesting on the last day of the year. Wow. We have also quite a few customers, as you can see. Yes, I see. And um, by the way, this is the Sule Giant Bankman Dam, um, somewhere around uh, Ninja State. And um, it's um, Indigo Africa's project, manned by Mr. Willie Flowering. And um, the noise at the background is obviously from some, um, some of the buyers. Of course, it's expected uh, on the farm. Let me explain you the uh, type of buyers we have. OK. They all have their uh, issues. This man, he came two hours later than the rest. Oh. So other people, other people are getting before him, but he doesn't uh, agree, so he's very angry. I can imagine. This man is an original Yoruba man. I see. He doesn't take things for granted. I see. And, and I you see. can see what they're doing here, Dominic. Let's see. Okay. See, they all have their uh, own name. Huh? No, 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 no. Okay. They all have their own name. This man has his own nickname. Wow. He's Mr. Ebele. Oh. <laughs> because Ebele fish had uh, fish with big belly. Oh. Now, uh, now I'm become also Mr. Ebele. <laughs> this is Madame Alice, but her nickname is uh, uh, Madame Wai Wai. Wow. Because the pleasure was in the, you, in the beginning, he was also buying small, Morning. small fish. Mm. That's, that's why everybody here has a nickname somehow. Wow. Yes. So your and customers. Also you can see, today, last day of the year, we have to uh, we celebrate it. Celebrate small. Wow. See now, you give them a small thing, they want to get more. Yes. <laughs> we need a bigger one. This one is not good enough for them. They need the thing, yeah, the chicken. Yeah, they need the chicken. We'll probably grill some fish for them later. You can also see. Um, Adama. Yes. see how they are loading fish. Exactly. I see. Uh, okay. This man has converted this vehicle into a fish car. Yes. And uh, it's just a normal car. But it can load 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It can load almost 500 kilo of fish. This is interesting. This car, because each bath like this, yes, is 25 kilo. Oh. You know, and this sack, yes, is, is porous, so the fish can breathe. Okay, okay, okay. You understand? Hmm. So this fish is going to where? Where's, this where's fish is going to where? Shandam. Shandam? Plateau? You came all the way from Plateau to buy fish here. And this vehicle will drive all the way. You can carry uh, 500 kilo, correct? Yeah? You can, huh? Wow. So this one is uh, selected? Okay. This one they call us selected. It's uh, around uh, 1.5, 1.6 kilo. 
Mm. You see? Mm. I see. This is quite interesting, I must say. To think that people travel all the way from other uh, states in uh, Nigeria. Now I will tell you the secret of Plato State. Plato State is the most coolest state of Nigeria. Yeah. So the temperature is not good for fish farming. Oh. So those people have to buy the fish outside. They like to eat it, but they cannot farm it successfully because it's too cold over there. Now I see. Now I see. This place sits at... And now you understand the, yeah. that I make this uh, sales point very, very... Big. Yes, I noticed that. In fact, I see so many others packed and ready for, for, for yeah, movement. You know, when, I mean, when you think about uh, uh, sales, I start wondering what, what then forms the basis for, for the, for the, for the uh, size of fishes some people buy. Because I noticed some people are picking a certain no, type. selection. Uh, most customers, they like the bigger sizes for barbecue, but also in the pepper soup, they cut it in pieces. Oh. You know, the head is going for 1,000 naira, then the smaller sizes, maybe four or five out of a fish, eight, 800 naira. I so, see. So uh, when they buy a fish from, from my side, yes. for let's say uh, 2,500 naira, they will almost double the price. Wow. But they have to cook it, they have to put the uh, yes. vegetables, yeah. they have to uh, run the, sh the, the establishment. I see. But actually they're making more profit than uh, the fish farmer at the moment. Wow, this is interesting I must say. Well, the story is obviously a success story of, I mean, for Suleja and Bankman Dam because um, the harvest, from what I see here, is this is this is the fourth harvest, if I'm not mistaken. The fourth pond I'm uh, harvesting. This is already the fifth pond. This is the fifth pond. Yeah, for this year. For this year. Yes. And the first harvest happened sometime in. Uh, uh, let's say five, six, five, six weeks ago. At that time, I only saw two customers. Hmm. But now you see the customers. They start to recognize the place, the consistency of the place. Yes and uh, they're happy with the quality of the fish. With what we have over there, can we say we can have fishes all year round? Yes, uh, that is my uh, intention and that is what is going to happen. Mm. Every uh, week I want to sell Jay. at least one time in a week. You got it one by and you, you have the capacity to sell like how many kilograms per uh, harvest? Uh, I'm looking now for what you we have produced between uh, five and 7,000 oh, kilo in a week. Mm. But uh, when we are, in, we are still in expansion yeah so we want to do more than that wow this is this is amazing i must say i must say that um uh, for some of our guests that will be wondering uh, how long i mean what how, how long did you grow these fishes before this harvest like what okay, is the cycle i, I started stocking you know uh, when the first ponds were ready yes i said let me put the pipeline so that water can go in let me finish the pre on growing. Yeah. You know, because when you build a farm, you do it in the right uh, timing so that the money is coming in quick. Exactly. Because the owner of the farm is suffering. Yes. Because he is now in a very serious debt because he has been investing, investing yeah. not only in the project but also in feed. I understand. So we start stocking in July. Yeah. And we start uh, harvesting already in November, end of November mm. and December. But the first harvest was very uh, sluggish. Yeah. But now things are going very quick. Okay. So, um, Mr. Willy, I, I see quite a lot of development. The weather is really. Why do you leave all the grasses messed up everywhere? You, no, don't, have, oh. you don't want to cut off these ones? No, 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 no. Dominic, this is a bush mint. Oh. It has a good smell, but actually, is a super food. Mm. The seed of this one is going in the market in uh, Europe for almost 15 dollar, 15 euro per kilo. Let this me show thing? you the, this thing, yes, this thing. See. See this, this black seed? Oh. This black seed is full with um, unsaturated fatty acids. Omega-2, omega-5 fatty acids. This one, if you put it in uh, your yogurt or in, in, uh, in a, ju a juice, yes. it gelatinizes and it becomes uh, very um, like, like gelatin, gelatin. Yes. And it's very healthy. I eat it, though. It's food. This is 
It's amazing. And people, they are, are suffering from, from quality food. Yes. And they're passing this place. I mean, I would, I would naturally cut it off because I would not feel this. They call it uh, Sia. C-I-E-A. C-I-E-A. Yeah. Sia seeds. It's very popular in the market in Europe for people who want to eat. So they cultivate it in Europe or they get them no, from somewhere? No, most of this comes from Australia, but here is natural. It's everywhere. I see it almost everywhere. And also, the, the, you smell it, huh? Eh? Yes, it actually smells There's good. a smell of lemon. Yeah. Yeah. This one, it we also use it. Uh, yes, you can also use it for the tea. Very healthy too. When you have a cough and all the rest. Yeah. You then inhale the, the, it. The, the, you can, uh, no, you drink it. Mm. That is also very good. Then it's also an organic uh, insecticide. Oh. You put it in water yes. with neem tree. You mix it very well. Then you spray it over your uh, corn and all the rest of the plantation you have. And it helps in uh, controlling uh, uh, pest. This is amazing. Then also this one. Nematodes don't like it. Oh. So if you are very smart, you plant this in between all kinds of crops which are very vulnerable to nematodes. This is so, and this thing is just growing by itself. Wow. So you don't trust it, huh? Because you don't eat my uh, seed. Oh, well. I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's and it new. swells up in your mouth. Really? Yes. So it's, it won't look that tiny. Can I have a little of it? Eat it now. Okay. Mm. So, and the, then, if you consider uh, the, eat, the eat pattern in Nigeria, mm -hmm. we are missing a lot of omega-2. Omega-2 fatty acid. Okay. I hear more and in, and it's three. inside this seed. Really? So, the, even the children in Nigeria should eat this seed. Now, at home, I have more than 100 kilo. From another place in cafe. Really? I uh, asked some guys to pick me 20 kilo. Of this thing? Yes, and I pay two dollar per kilo. No, not, not two dollar, a thousand naira. Let's say one dollar twenty per kilo. I paid for the seat. Cleaned wow. everything. Wow. The problem is that it spread as a fire. So they had more than 150 kilo. Are you serious? They pick more than 150 kilo of this of seat. That for uh, one dollar twenty. Bush mint, you called it. Yeah, it's bush mint. There's a different name. I don't even know the latter name. A, if you go on the internet, you see so many things about the advantages of eating this seed. It's amazing. Wow. More of 10 different advantages. Of that eating thing. this seed, everybody is passing it, nobody is eating it. You know, this is incredible, I must say. One would ordinarily think your journey is more towards uh, fishes, but I see you having nurseries here. And yeah, because this land now we are clearing. Okay. I want to prepare this land for the next raining season. Okay. Um, I don't even know where my... Uh, because I have a nursery man. He knows all the names of all the trees which we have been seeding here and, and coming out and oh. germinating. It's a shame, I don't see him. Maybe he went for break. Mm. But here we have uh, more than... a capacity of more than 20,000 trees. Wow. And we have melina, we have tamarind, we have acacia, we have uh, moringa, yeah. we have uh, popo. I have also uh, under the cashew tree at the sales point, I have my different types of grafted mango. <coughs> Adama, our cameraman for today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do some snapshots of uh, the different uh, plants are coming out from, from close. Yes. Yeah. Do you have an idea what this... What no, I don't even know, but uh, maybe somebody from the audience will tell us. Exactly. Looks like a... No, it's not coconut, but uh, I don't even know what it is. It cannot be coconut, of course. But this is Moringa. Yeah? Yeah. Pop is there, yes? Let's see. Small popo. Is the idea behind this to... I mean, this, this covering. Oh yeah, this covering is to, for the direct sunlight to reduce. Oh. The weather is too harsh. There's no cloud. 
This is the peak of the dry season. Yeah. Hamatan, very dry weather. It's very harsh climate. So that's why you know when we have a uh, professional uh, nursery for planting, for plant nursery, yeah. you would have a shade netting. Maybe 50, 60 or 70 percent. But this is our uh, local shade netting. And it's very effective, obviously. And also cheap, yes. Yeah, it's doing the job, you know? Today be also, the... I don't know the, si the, the type of this thing. That but one. I know this one. Uh, this one I know. It looks like a pier. This one, as small as they are, they are very, very with big thorn. This is ac acacia. See, there's an acacia over there. Okay. Yeah, that bigger one. <laughs> very good for uh, stopping animals and ma human beings because it's very sharp and very resistant to drought. You know, oh, it doesn't uh, evaporate. It doesn't need much water. It doesn't need much water. I see. Then here you can see another one I know the name of. This one is Melina. I see. Melina grows very fast. They also call it uh, white teak. So the idea is just to plant it for wood? Yeah, this is for wood. Correct, for wood. No yeah, all this thing. area you see, uh, Adama. Yeah. By the next raining season, I'm going to plant trees and grasses. Later on, I will show you the, the one we did in the, in the raining season okay. for this year. Okay. It starts a bit late. This year I want to start more early, so I benefit more from the raining season. Good. But we'll do that from the embankment. Okay, you, rem you remember, um, Dominique, yes, sir. that we had uh, about nine, ten ducks? Yes, actually. Yeah? You want to know what happened with the ducks? Well, I, I'm sure that our viewers too will be interested in the story around those ducks we've been talking about. Oh, I see some ducks swimming in your... Yeah, this is my broodstock pond for broodstock catfish. Tank, and they don't fight them. They don't. They're able to coexist with them. Yes, they do. When you feed the, feed the fish, you're actually feeding more the ducks at the moment. Wow. Uh, my ducks here, the Moscovite uh, ducks. Yeah. Yes. I uh, consider this place for them a five-star uh, restaurant with wow. all the options: swimming pool, uh, meadows, you know, food everywhere. Always food, you know, like uh, the table is always clothed with food. So they're enjoying wow. themselves. Wow. See, this is the mama with four. Can you imagine? But she had 16, but I lost 12 because oh we had some God. issues with snake. Oh my they God. eat our small ducklings. Well, that's, that's a lot. But these ones are all young ones. They're all offspring. Wow. Let's come and see. I can have Adama. you tell the difference between the mama and the, and the babies. Or well, the ducklings. I sold some of it. Oh. I sold some to find out what the market is doing. I was not able to sell to Chinese restaurant. Okay. Because they are very famous in the Peking ain't Peking duck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they were not interested because there's no good supply. So they cannot put it on the menu. But I can go to the local market. Yeah. And they will buy them for three, five, four, five, depending on the size of the duck. The male is bigger than the female. I see. These are still ducklings, including this. No, 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 no. no. This mama. one is a mama. It's an <laughs> old one. These are all new ones. The new ones are looking bigger than even the old ones. See, this, this, that is the drake. Oh. Over there. That's the father of all of them. No, I have two fathers. This one is a drake, and this one is a drake. I see. You seem to have more white duck. Then, uh, yeah, I have one uh, uh, offspring with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one of them is nine. Mm. Because I see the mama is the one not so beautiful. You see the mama? Yes, the smallest that small one. one. The smallest one is yes. the mama. They are bigger than their mama now. They are bigger than the mama and that one is even a male, I think. <laughs> wow. So, and also, Wow. There was a period of uh, drought with the ducks. They don't lay egg, but now one starts to lay egg. That's interesting. After uh, two months, one, one starts to lay. If the uh, procreation has a season to it. Uh, maybe, but now one has started at least. 
So I know the pattern now. They will do maybe about 15 egg. Okay. Then he will start laying on the egg. That is for 30 something days. Yes, it's slightly longer, I think, than, an, uh, uh, than an, uh, a chicken. Yes. And then they will come out. Well, obviously, ducks seem to have a stronger, uh, say, or they are more resilient to harsh conditions than chickens, right? They are. They don't get sick as easily as chicken. Uh, food, they are more omnivorous. I see. They don't make noise. Yeah. I, I prefer the ducks. I, like yeah, I prefer the ducks. And there's, there's, uh, there's a demand for it. In the local market, they, I can sell any quantity. They promise me any quantity you have, just bring, we will buy. We'll buy. So I want to, to uh, do the stocks. Yeah, I want to grow the, my stock. I told you. Yeah. 200. Okay. Then uh, from the offsprings, I start to sell gradually. Maybe every week I can sell 20, 30 pieces. This is interesting, yeah. I must say. We make some small change. The journey that started with just nine ducks, now we have over 30. Uh, over 30, but I lost a lot of uh, ducklings because of this area. There was a big snake. He messed up all my ducklings. Wow. Because at the moment the ducks uh, have their ducklings, they go inside this place because there's some little water going up and down. Yeah. Then I have a very interesting thing. I noticed Probably. those ducks. I, I don't think they are, how do you call it? Uh, uh, how do you call it? Couple. Okay. Because they, in the literature they say it's one uh, male, one drake oh. against eight, eight females. Mm -hmm. But those two, I always see them together. And this one is the one laying egg. Wow. And when she's laying egg, he will sit in front of that uh, bucket. <laughs> so they are men and wife. Oh. <laughs> so does it mean the drake doesn't go after others? I don't know because he's always with that one. Wow. As you can see, I put eucalyptus tree. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been trying a lot of things. My rice was a failure, mm. complete. My garden was a failure. But you know, you try many things and some things are working and some things some are not working. Work. Yeah. But my eucalyptus is working very fine in this area. Wow. As you can see, all the trees are yes. green and they're growing. No, I can tell. And do you have your boys water them? No, here I don't water them because there's uh, more or less a lot of water is going here everywhere. Because it's very low area, there's a lot of water here. Mm. So here we don't uh, do any watering. I see. Yeah. I see. Well, um, I must say that the, the realities we see around here is um, success. But would we say that the project Apart from your fish farm, which obviously, um, I mean, you have 21 ponds from the last um, shots we had. I saw 21 ponds, which you've completed. The other uh, infrastructures and projects you started, which one would you say made you feel a little disappointed in 2022? Um, what? Yeah, some of my the rice fields was a big disappointment. Mm. Um, our agroforestry, you know, we also planted the bananas, yeah. which is wrong because that should be irrigated in the dry season. Yeah. So I don't think that is a good uh, uh, veg uh, good fruit to Fruits plant to in, plant the, in that area. Okay. But I put uh, bananas uh, in this area with uh, drip irrigation, okay. and they're doing fine. Even the popos. Okay. So. Um, I'm not so disappointed. Uh, I know dry season is just to keep all the trees alive. Yeah. Because I know in the raining season they will pick up, become stronger. The root system will be stronger. Yeah. And it will be they are more resilient. I so see. the first uh, dry season, yeah. after you plant them in the raining season, is actually uh, a very critical time. Certainly. Yeah? Certainly. Um, oh. On the on the face farm. We had some challenges, especially in the in the nursery. Mm. I had a lot of uh, mortalities. Really? Not even mortalities, but more or less no good survival rates. I can't even see where the mortality actually is going, but there's a lot of cannibalism. Okay. And the cannibalism is due to also diseases. Okay. You know, when you have a disease in a in a pond, that means that the weak ones will be eaten by the ones which are not uh, uh, strike by disease. Yes, yes. So you create in a pond where there's a lot of opportunity 
a lot of challenges, yeah, you create a lot of cannibalism. Mm. I always make a joke, I have little Nigeria in my pond. Exactly, I We remember. have everybody is, uh, the rich people are predating on the poor. On the poor ones. Yeah. No, but I would wonder that, um, I mean, I, I thought having a, a dam, having enough water, and to some extent the water looks clean, one would assume that you should not have any uh, issue of a disease. What could be the reason for that? And what have you done to try to... Okay, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, which I don't exactly know what the problem, why it is so pronounced in my farm. Because from the same supplier I bring to other, sub, other customers, they're using borehole water mm -hmm. and they don't have any issues with those fish. So I know the problem is coming from the water. Now, the dam water is a natural water. Mm. Yeah? And it is full with bacteria, even if the water is clear, mm. transparent. It is full with aramonas. Vibrio, giving bacterial problems in the fish. I see. And uh, yeah, we can treat it, but if we don't, also that part of the treatment has to be in a way that it is effective. Okay. You treat the right dosage. Yeah. You treat the right time. Okay. Yes, you also do the grading in the right time. So also with my staff, they also are going through a learning process. I have to fine tune it. But in the meantime, I also built some uh, tanks over there. Okay, can we go closer? Yeah, we can go closer. Okay. I'm doing there a, a treatment system. Okay. So first of all, I want all the sediments, even the water is clear at the moment. I want all the small particles to be coming out of this, uh, out of my water. Okay, before they so get So I in. fill this one with brushes. Yeah. There's some brushes. I wish we could yeah, see Yeah, you can inside. go up on the Adama, you are strong. You can go climb up and show from the top. Then we keep on talking. Yes. So the water is going from one tank to the other tank. And there's a big difference. The first tank is more dirty than the last tank. Mm. Yeah. And this water I'm using for the first four uh, blue tanks. Yes. So when the fish are coming in, I want to stock them here. Okay. Then after one week or one and a half week, I grade them to the other side. I see. I see. You can see the brushes. You see a difference in the tanks. This, this is the last one. It's more clear. Correct? Mm. That's interesting. So, uh, so far since um, this intervention, can we say there has been difference or do you think this might require you going for some water quality test or something yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, I have to do now a scientific approach. Okay. I have to do the bacterial load of the water which is coming in okay. and the water which is coming out. Okay. Yeah, with a good company we can do uh, this uh, uh, calculation, a good lab. I guess. Yeah? Then if it is not working fine, I have to start adding uh, hydrogen peroxide. Mm. To kill the, the remaining germs. Okay. Now. But I've not done that yet. You've not done. It's just the filters for now. Yes. And the filter, to a great extent, would reduce. Does the filter reduce the bacterial load or just the I, dirt? I think it reduces the dirt, and in the dirt there are a lot of bacteria. Okay. So it okay. will reduce. Okay. But only by going with my samples to the lab, I will find. I will know. I get. Yeah, okay. because I know in most of our waters in Nigeria, we are facing a lot of problems with Aramonas bacteria. Mm. That's they're, a, they're that's facultative. A type of bacteria, right? Their bacteria can live in anaerobic and anaerobic situation. Wow! So they are actually very resilient, and they can kill a lot of fish. But do they affect humans? Uh, yes, we have also Aramonas affections in uh, human beings. But not with this, uh, not this particular this, one. This, particular this is, one. Uh, I think this one is Aramonas hydrophila. hydrophila. Mm. And we have also ones in very cold water. The Aramonas salmonicida is for salmon. Okay. And it's very deadly. Wow. So well, it kills saying. a lot of fish uh, actually in farms. Now, in those uh, over there, yes. when I stock my uh, juveniles, I create first green water. What does the green water do? The green water is uh, giving an environment for the fish where they feel more comfortable. 
so that they are not less infected by the disease. A reducement of stress means a better immune system because all those bacteria are facultative. And because I have so many fish in a pond, it breaks out. If I have only 10 pieces in the pond, it will never break out. Okay. Also because the bacteria are on the skin mm -hmm. and make wound. Mm -hmm. And you know catfish, they like to nibble on somebody else's body. Yeah. So by doing that, this mouth gets affected. So um, I, I want to get better clarity and I'm sure quite a number of viewers will also want to know that. When you say green water, you are, you are referring to water that turned green because of algae. Yes, right? that is the uh, one cellular algae. Now, uh, I would think from my little understanding that the algae coming into the water will reduce the oxygen uh, level of the water. But how come that is now beneficial? Okay, now, it's it not completely like that. Algae, they produce oxygen in the daytime and they consume oxygen in the night. So in the daytime, you will have oversaturation of oxygen. But in the night, it will be close to zero so how because of algae. But that is not that, that's not a problem for my uh, catfish. My they, catfish don't they, mind because they take it from the air. Oh. And maybe that bacteria, because you're asking me this thing, maybe this bacteria doesn't like those fluctuations in oxygen levels. So you create an environment where the fish responds better on it than the bacteria. Suffers and dies. Yes. And this is how everything is working in life. Even in your uh, gut system, mm. it's a constant fight, who is the boss? Exactly. Who is the boss? <laughs> yeah? And then you get to see better from what comes out of the poop. If the poop is not okay, that means that the wrong ones are uh, uh, in the favor. <laughs> yeah? Well, this is interesting, I must say. Uh, to be honest, I, I am learning a whole lot. We're talking about fish and it relates to our politics, it relates to even our living, and it relates to a whole lot of things. I would like to see what is going on at the harvest point. At least our viewers can see um, what the structure of our tank is in okay. terms of what has happened. Okay. And um, they can appreciate better before okay. we go and have an area of view. Area of view, yes. Okay, yes. let's go. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility convincingly So you can see, we drain the water Yeah The people will go inside the water and start catching them with this catcher Okay you see this see catcher? catcher? Can you video this? You see already it's getting spoiled. We have to fix it. Mm. I see. And then... Um, and the fish are around 1.3 kilo. That's, that's the average, average weight. weight. That's the average weight, yes. How old are they? Uh, this one... I think we uh, stock them somewhere in uh, September. Okay. At, the, uh, at the size of 30 gram. Wow. This is so really that is uh, September, October, November, December. Four months? Yes. And, the, and they can grow to this size? Yes, from 30 gram. That's because that's my first fish I st stocked in July. Yeah. So this one is not, is, is, uh, is not even August, but you see this one, this is number five. Yes. So this one will be the beginning of August, I suspect. August, September, October, November, December. No, it's about five months. Five months? Yeah, not more than five months. I think a little bit less. This is interesting, I must say. By the way, we have how many tanks that are stocked at the moment? Now we are reducing because I, I finished one pond and one pond, I think now it's on only 12. Wow. But I have fish to restock. And I, want, I know our viewers will be wondering the capacity of these tanks. Yes, I How stock, I stock uh, between five and 6,000 pieces. I grow them to 1.3 kilo. And the size of this tank, each of the tanks? It's uh, 10 by 5. Mm. 50 cubic meter. I see. This is only possible because of... Yeah, you see the water flow is constant. Yes. But not for all the ponds. Uh, you see when the ponds are stocked with less fish or smaller fish, you can come and see.
You can see this pond, uh, Dominique. Yeah. This pond is uh, stocked uh, two weeks ago, I think. Around okay. two weeks ago, you see the water is still green. Yes. Because my production of algae is higher than my flushing rate. And it's a deliberate thing. And I do it deliberately because I like the water to be green. But at a certain point, your feeding gift is so much and the water is getting so dirty, yes. I have to increase my flushing rate. And by doing that, the algae production can never cope with my flushing rate. And you get normal water. I see. Yeah. That is interesting. So uh, we are saying. playing with the water to create an environment which is uh, uh, suitable for the fish. This is amazing, I must say, to think that um, this, pro this project was uh, Beth just uh, in January, and now we have 21 ponds ready to make 2023 um, a special here for, yes. for people living by, in by, Abuja. By God's grace, I will be full in production uh, this line in the next three months. This I will have stocked all my ponds. Well, and um, talking about um, uh, um, um, production and um, the prospects of um, reproducing something like this in a number of places around um, Nigeria, do you think that um, uh, a project like this, if um, I mean a project of this magnitude, like how many of them would you, do you think would be sufficient to take care of, say Abuja? I would say 20. Hmm. 20 of these farms. 20 of this type of farm? Yes. And Maybe the, even more. The capacity of what the production, uh, the, the production uh, uh, goals of this farm is how many? Uh, uh, this farm can do in full production, this 21 pounds can do about 400,000 kilo a year. That's a lot. That is, let me say, uh, seven, eight ton in a, in a week. And I believe that we need much more than this in Abuja. Abuja is a very big town with a lot of uh, satellite uh, uh, cities. Yeah. There's a lot of buying power. Yes. And you know, uh, they are all from all over the Nigeria. It's a cosmopolitan uh, city. city. So people like to uh, go out, yeah. eat their pepper soup or yeah. their uh, roasted fish. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, don't underestimate the buying power of Abuja. But I am even surprised, for example, in Makodi, yeah. which is a town in the Benuin state, yeah. if you see the demand of fish is incredible. Makodi. Because the Igbos, they love to uh, go out, drink their beer and eat their pepper soup. Yes, the Makodi people are the thieves and the, the, the Idomas uh, that predominates that place. And um, one would think that, um, okay, uh, uh, Dominic, we are going to get another uh, batch of fish. Yes. So we can see small uh, uh, I see. harvest. I see. The, the crew is set again. I think this will be a very good sight because some of us who love to see the fishes move. You can now see my landscape will be that I can uh, uh, go up, up and down, all the way down. Yes. I can go with my car. With the remaining land, Yes. I want to plant it in the raining season with uh, fruit trees. Wow. Bananas, popo, that sort of kind of things, and ma mangoes. All this want to be green. Mm. Now uh, I have an issue because the man who planted this cashew, yes, he wants to cut it down. No way. Yes. Why? And uh, I already stopped him for cutting down. He's upset or what? No, he said uh, it's my tree, and uh, but he wants compensation. Okay. So, so I have to compensate him for the trees. He wants. He feels the the the, the, the cashew is being. The used. land is not his land. But he planted the trees, not having any agreement with the owner of the land, there's the government. Oh. But still, they consider him as the owner of the tree. So, and I don't want the cashew to be cut. No, no. You no, know no. me now. Of course, I know you would. You oppose So that. next week we'll have an uh, issue with that uh, old papa. You know, I remember you always, when in, a, in, a, in an earlier video we did sometime in, um, in June, you were talking about the cashew should be left and all the rest. So. I'm sure some of our viewers who have been very, uh, I mean, uh, who have been following our, our podcast will confirm that you've always seek the protection of that thing. So if the man is bitter, then we'll buy it from him. We have to buy the trees. We'll buy it from him because... Because also the cashew is producing. Yes. And the fruits are nice. I mean, I can imagine he's not doing it. He's not thinking of this from a happy 
a point of view. No, he knows that I can pay. Yeah, he just wants to. And he already came with women with cut last to cut all to the trees. Oh, I stopped no. it. So let's see what is going on there. Well done, well done, Sas. Yeah, well done. Well done, well done. Mr. Isaac, well done. Well done, well done. Thank you. Uh, who's writing down? Yes, me. Where's your paper? Here. Oh. Okay. Are you uh, doing uh, the average weight uh, for every tank? Yeah. One pound three. Yeah. Is this the first time? No, 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 no. The one I took when uh, Johnson was feeding the fish. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is the third or the fourth time? This, I think, sh this should be fifth or sixth. This is sixth How many time. times you have done this thing now? Uh, five times. This is the fifth time? Yes. No, uh, sixth time. So you have already two five. Yeah, this is the fifth time. Oh, okay. okay, this is the fifth time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I guess. So, uh, I'm so sure see, I'll, I'll let me understand. Let me uh, explain you yes. what we do here. Exactly. We do harvest here. We do average weight. Yes. And we calculate also how many kilo we take out. Okay. So now we have the comparison from here. We can compare the sales point. Because the sales point, you know, is going buri buri. Oh yeah. And you yeah. know, you have some little thieves there. Exactly. So, but at least now we have a very good marker for what we're getting out, and what we're getting there should be almost the same. Mm. There's a difference of about three three percent. I see. I see. Which is negligible, right? Ah, three percent is still three percent. I'm not happy with three percent. Of course, because three percent is uh, yeah, on five thousand kilo. Yeah. It's one hundred fifty kilo. Yes. One hundred fifty kilo is uh, almost two hundred thousand naira. Yes. But two hundred thousand naira, you can do a lot of uh, very oh, bad oh, things oh, in oh, this oh. country. <laughs> so, what could be responsible for the percentile difference? The moment you do this thing, yes. they lose already weight. Then, when we put them for scale, if it is twenty-five pound two, yes. twenty-five pound three, they consider it twenty-five. Oh, I see. Yeah? Like in Ibadan, when they sell to Abuja, they stock 26 kilo in the, in the, in the bath. Mm -hmm. Because when they arrive, it will be 25 kilo. I see. I see. I see. This is interesting. So, for biosecurity purpose, your truck is being used to convey these uh, fishes from yeah, this yeah, yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, because if I uh, have my customers here, they start pop nosing everywhere. It's not uh, what I want, and they come with a dirty bath. I want this thing to be uh, uh, tidy. Uh, tidy yeah. So now you see the dead fish here. I was going to ask. Yeah, we are using it to make uh, a uh, melange, melasse, and dead fish. Yeah, becomes fertilizer. So we are fermentating the dead fish in a melasse. Yeah, melasse is like a sugar uh, solution. Okay. Yeah, we leave it for six weeks, then it becomes like a liquid, okay. and it becomes a liquid fertilizer. How do you call Sorry? it? Hydrolysis. Hydrolyzed. Hydro hydrolyzed. Okay. So we don't have any waste. Even our fish is full with protein. Yes. So full with nitrogen, full with phosphates, full with calcium, the bone. These are all nutrients which the tree needs. Yeah, and I'll talk So we are recycling our dead fish. For farmers that um, don't know much about this, what is the danger of saying, oh, the fish is dead, that the staff have it? What could go wrong? No, no, no. If you ask the staff to start taking dead fish and they see a benefit in it, they will create an environment that your fish are uh, dying. So I don't want them to even eat one fish. It's very easy, they take one fish, they take it, they barbecue it, it's, it's just a diet. Yes. But actually it's bad. Because you know, when they see no dead fish, they say, ah, where is my food? <laughs> so it's not okay. I guess. See, you have to be always thinking very far. Mm. You have to be good to your, to your, uh, your staff. Yes. But to be honest, to, to let them eat the dead fish is easy. But it's dangerous too. This is interesting. Because they cannot control themselves. If there's no dead fish... It's wrong everywhere. It's bad news. You know, in another farm, all my dead fish was collected by the villagers. I remember the... the uh, Ibele farm. farm. You know that I can see from the number of people waiting at the gate. Hoping. What I already know, what I already can expect in my pond. 
They already know my mortality before I enter my farm at 7 o'clock. How is that possible? <laughs> wow. You understand what I'm saying? I see. You know, so when you talk about uh, fish farming, it goes beyond raising the fish. This is the moment of truth, right? Of course. And on the moment of truth, on this day, the factors that goes into ensuring that um, uh, you don't run into loss could be even as uh, uh, insignificant as what you do with dead fishes, right? Correct. All those factors are a part of the problem. Mm. Now, they secure this place. I have not done enough. I even on tomorrow, yes. my dogs are coming. Dogs, okay. not the dogs. Oh, the dogs. So, only my, my staff, the two dedicated to the farm, yes. are a able to touch the dogs. My, se my security should be outside the gate, and anytime they see the dog, they should hit the dog, so that the dog will be vicious to anybody. What I want, actually, is a place where nobody will stay in this farm. Only my dog. Good. And the dog will roam around to see, uh, see somebody. He will, you know, he, he, he will do it. something, he will, will attempt. Guess. And you know, a dog has no hand for catcher. Certainly. So there can be stories of... There's no story with dog. <laughs> what, what, what is going on around here, Mr. Willy? Yeah, we planted uh, some sugar cane. Okay. They say this is the time of the year. And uh, when you look at it, see this one? Yes. It's coming out. I see. Yeah. And, and this one. Okay. You I have to look very that. well. I see them. This one is coming out. I think this one is coming out. This one is coming out. Mm. So it's, it's coming out gradually. I see. But I hope one of my viewers will say, ah, what you are doing is all rubbish. You have to do it differently than I want to get the comments. Okay, because yes. I, I, I just uh, rely on my driver and my security man. They claim they know everything, so. Oh yeah, you're just a fish farmer. You can, but your curiosity and love for nature is what leaves you trying everything. Most likely they'll survive because um, if they have water and they have a good soil, uh, I don't think... But you know what I, what I am proud of? See this tree? This tree, I, I, I planted it as seed. I saw this tree as a massive tree in my Tama, mm. in an expansive area in Abuja. Yeah. A beautiful line. It's not flamboyant tree, that is the flamboyant tree with the red flowers, this is a different species. Yeah. And so I seeded it, it came out, I planted it. This is not up to seven months old. Wow. Something like seven months I planted it. So it will form a good shade that will... That, that, that this tree can be so big, it can do uh, 100 square meters. So I, I told you yesterday, I got the information. One of my garden in uh, Kujé, Yes. Is in an area which is actually not developed. Mm. It's not far from a Fulani uh, settlement. So I, I fenced it. I put gate. Yeah, up in there. In, in the middle of the night, at two o'clock, they break the fence, and the cow came in and raped all my uh, place. Wow! Like they ate up all the green in your compound. Not all, but some things they don't like to eat. Abandoned. But uh, it, they told the man who stays there, don't talk, we, we, otherwise we'll kill you. This is really unfortunate. This and I know it's not even about, it's not personal. Yeah. But they see one development can push another development. Yeah. And they have been using this land. Exactly. To grace. For years. For years. Now, the land doesn't belong to them. Yeah. It belongs to the buggy people. The buggy people sold it. Yeah. Yeah, but they have always been using the land. Yeah. Now they see something they don't like. Okay, so Mr. Willy, I see, I mean, quite a number of grasses looking already dried. Are you going to burn them? No, 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 Dominic. I don't burn uh, this uh, organic matter. Oh, really? Because. Uh, I, I learned from internet and also from some people, they say burning uh, the bush, it kills also actually the soil and all the bacteria, the fungus and all the animal life inside the soil. Oh. So no, I'm going to put it in ridges 
and okay. I will use it uh, when I start planting my trees. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will put it around it so that the soil not dry out. I see. So the dauphin mulches on the ground. Yes, we want to mulch it. Yeah, correct. So see. there's no burning of anything. I see. It is very tempting to burn, clear everything, have more clear soil. If the soil is clear now with this hamatan and the big wind, all your topsoil, the little topsoil we have left, will also go. I get. No, no, no. That, that clearing of uh, that uh, burning of of the thing. I even told my people not to do it because some attempted to do it even for the rat. The bush rat so will come catch. out and they will catch it to eat. Oh. So I already warned them, don't don't burn. Mm. If they burn that place, when I'm not around, I will punish them because they don't get salary. See, now you can see, Dominique, the agri, yeah. uh, agroforestry. Yes, sir. You see the tree line and the grasses. Exactly. All the other crops we have already harvested. You know the different beans? Yeah. The Uganda beans, I have the white ones, the colored ones. I don't know all the names to be honest, but they are very important for nitrogen fixing. Yes. Yes, all that has gone. Yesterday I uh, harvested the hibiscus. Oh, really? Because uh, that is good for sobo. Yes. I also harvest the seed for next year. Mm. Yeah, so you see the tree lines. Yes, the, it's uh, very to, clear. Uh, the trees, they are uh, now, uh, they get hardly any water. Some of the trees get water, but most of the trees, they don't get water. Mm. And it has already been dry for. I say almost two months now. No, one and a half. Yeah, almost two months almost that's been months. dry, yes. And the trees are still looking green. Yes. And the grasses are even getting bigger. I'm even surprised. Yes, the Napier grasses look like um, they, are, they are still very much in the, in the rainy season. They seem like they're getting water from somewhere. I think the rooting system is very deep. Okay. And they don't evaporate much. Strong leaf. Yeah, so next year I will have multiple uh, of it. Okay. I can uproot and start to multiply. Oh. Because one bunch you can cut it out in maybe in 100 pieces. Wow. So the multiplying factor with grass is enormous. One hectare can do 50 hectares in the next year, something like that, or even more. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I, I, can, I can see the. The, uh, the the fact that quite a number of the other plants are struggling, like the bananas. No, the uh, bananas, they are struggling. We give them water. I hope they I can survive. They can survive till the next raining season. But I think bananas in this type of uh, environment, uh, where there's no drip irrigation, I don't think it can work. No, I yeah. agree with you. So I agree. It looks, it's too uh, much, it's too cumbersome. Yes. Now you can also see, you're reaching now my burrow pit. Yeah. My tilapia pond. See that. We did a short video about our tilapias. Yeah, sometime. Uh, this is uh, just uh, made because I needed the laterite for the road. Yes. The road backward of the, the lake. You see the bamboos, they're doing also very yes, good. They're doing very well. That bamboo now is almost six meters or more. No, 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 there's not. It's not up to? No, but four meters is possible. Three, three. Three meters, four One, meters. Two, three. And you see also the water leaves, the, the, the reed. Yeah. It's coming up also very well. Oh yeah, I see them in, in, in the water. I have already have a, I see this place uh, in the next two years that will be covered by the bamboos and the reed. I will mm. put a few benches. You can yeah. sit quietly under the shade of the bamboo. Mm. Yeah. The coconut trees will be also bigger. Yeah. It will look nice. Well, the coconut seems to be doing well. And now you see the bananas. Yes, they seem to be doing very well from this view. Yeah, the bananas are doing well because that one is irrigated by drip irrigation. I see. Yesterday, I see, I see them. Yesterday also uh, I gave them some fish poop. Mm. And you see also the, pop the popos, they're also doing very well. Oh, yes. I think it's a, a, a short variety because they, get, they are st thick but they don't grow much in the height. So I believe those things, we can pluck the, the popos from uh, without a ladder. I get. I see some water lines, drip irrigation. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. That's interesting. So all this area, I have uh, pressure from the dam. Yes. So also the other side, 
I can do also drip irrigation. I so I will do uh, irrigated system and non-irrigated system. Well, I know. I can cite um, our uh, teak, right? Uh, this is uh, teak, yes, this is teak. I didn't plant it, I just prune it, I cut it, uh, cut some pieces off so that the remaining can grow bigger. Mm. I see. So now we can sight our ponds from this view. This gives a very good view of the, of the project because now yeah. uh, our viewers can appreciate how much work has gone has gone into this. It's more like an aerial view from the top. Yes, and, you, uh, you, you know how much uh, I paid for all those ponds? What it cost me to build it? How much? About uh, 60 million naira, mm. including the piping system. That's interesting. So for, for most people, it's too much money. But I believe that it is uh, a cheap investment if you consider that it can last for over 25 years. Oh, really? Yes, it will. This is amazing. And you know, we are st we are stocking high volumes. Yes. Uh, the, la the, the pond we just finished today is three, pond number three. Is that right? Yes. Pond number three is empty, eh? Yeah? That's yeah. No, number five. five. And three, is, three and five three is, empty. is empty. Yeah, we, but we empty yeah, number three today. And our total harvest was 7.4 ton. Mm. So it's over 8 million. That's, that's so if you do 8 million two times a year, 16 million, you do that 25 times in, a, in, a, in the lifetime of the pond, 25 times 16 is over 350 million naira. So what is the price of a pond? Oh, wow. You have to look at that the long term. Yes, I see. Uh, this, is, this is really good. If you ask me, I think um, this is a worthwhile investment and it is, it is testimony to the fact that you have devoted your life to uh, good quality, good service at all times. And um, this project is, is in fact, it's, everything looks already set, even though the, uh, uh, the what, what do you call that? The landscaping, landscaping. that's not doing finished, I will finish it next year. Yes, it looks really beautiful from this view. It's uh, 21 ponds in all. And so far we have um, we have um, 14 minus two. That is pond, and pond three and five that were emptied. Today. Today. So we have um, 12, 12 tanks standing. Yes, but I have fish to stock. Oh, interesting. So you're stocking like tomorrow or how? No, how I will stock next week. Let me rest. Oh, that is really nice. Well done, Mr. Willie. I must say that um, 2022 indeed came with expectations and um, I remember when we started this journey just in front of the, um, uh, uh, the intake the intake here yeah. the journey started and you talked about the vision and today the 31st day of December 2022 we stand to see the realization of a big dream perhaps this is the beginning of a big story here and Suleja Embankment Dam will become the destination for many Nigerians far and near within and outside Abuja. Thank you so much for your time and for everything. You're welcome, Dominic. Happy New Year. Same to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir.